To start this project, I needed some PVC pipe. I decided to use PVC for the rotor and not Perspex, because Perspex is just way too brittle. Heating the PVC makes it soft and malleable. Okay, once we've got our pipe all flattened out, now we're going to draw our templates for where our magnets are going to go. So let's go ahead and do that. I've decided to go with a diameter of 160 mils. The magnets I'll be using are powerful neodymium magnets, 40 by 5 by 10. I'll be using a total of 16 magnets. I'll be using a drill bit that's slightly smaller than the magnets. This will ensure that the magnets are a tight fit. Be very careful with these magnets, they are hard and brittle. Even using a rubber mallet, I managed to break one. Although the magnets were a tight fit, I decided to put super glue for reinforcements. Okay, so for the winding of this generator, I'll be using a coil from a contact. Well, I'm going to be using quite a few of them. So this is what it looks like. And now how this works is that lava neutral will come onto these two points and it will cause an electromagnetic field and then pull this steel in, closing the contacts, allowing a large electric current to flow through the contacts. So that's how a contactor works. I decided to cut the excess off because all I'll be needing is the coil. I then brace some thicker wire onto the thin wires of the coils. I then drilled holes for the coils in 200 by 200 by 20 mm thick perspex sheets. 20 mm hole for the bearing, and 10 mm hole for the mounting rods. And then some holes for the cables. Okay, so now we need to put the bearings in. Okay, the, remember that the stator gets the bearing. Okay, we're gonna need two bearings over here because it's quite thick. So, we yeah, put two bearings inside over here. Okay, so we can just lightly tap that into position. Okay, then this is the rotor, okay? You can see that I made a mistake here and I just had to put a piece of PVC inside there. And then this bearing I'll put on this side. Okay, so now that we've got all the wires 
in and everything we can start putting everything together so i have put this threaded bar to the bearing and now we're going to put the rotor on <coughs> And then we can go ahead and add on the other stator. And then we're going to add on a rotor and then we can add on the other stator. Okay, so we got everything bolted together. Now we can go ahead and fix our coils in series, so that's what we're going to do now. And I just want to show you what this can do. These are just two coils. So that's like three volts, no problem, just by hand turning. So that's amazing. Okay, so now we're going to connect all the other coils as well. Okay, so now that we've got uh, the coils in series, I've connected or three coils in series as well okay um, the reason why I think this is one of the best designs for a DIY job is because you can always add on more coils mm -hmm. and stators so I got this idea from American Tech and I just think it's a really cool generator design so let's go ahead and just solder these together and then we can see how much voltage you can make Okay, so moment of truth. And it's the near bulb. Okay, so we're gonna give this light bulb a go. It is 220 volts, 5 watts, and we're gonna see if this thing lights up. Okay, you also got to remember that this doesn't have any metal cores in it and the coils are very thin which means that the power outage is not that great but still lights up this bulb so I'm happy with that. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to put some metal cores in here like these bolts and then we'll see how much power outage we can get from there. Okay, so this is with the metal cores. Oh wow, look at that. Oh, that's amazing. It's crazy. Let's try out with this higher wattage. Ah, oh, there we go. Beautiful. I hope you enjoyed this video and ready to make your own DIY generator. Please don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Until next time, thanks for watching.